This book, Cleaning Sucks, is a combination wake-up call and training guide for how to tackle your house, how to overcome the obstacles that are stopping you from getting started with your cleaning. And I'm telling you, I got this one from the library, but I'm going to put a link below if you want to get it because it's completely worth your time to buy it and read it. And so today, we're talking about the lessons that I learned from Cleaning Sucks. <laughs> So one of the key things that is pointed out in the book is start today. Just start today. Every single day is a new start. It's a fresh opportunity to get things done, to change your life, to be 1% better than you were yesterday. Here's a truth bomb for you. Don't get scared. It's not that hard. But hey, cleaning is not a one and done. You're never ever 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 gonna be at a point where your house is perfectly clean because messes happen let's face it if i'm out here getting hot and sweaty and then i go get in the shower i'm making the shower dirty even though i'm feeling better about myself so every action leads to another action and so we're never gonna have perfection we're just not but the truth bomb that they threw down was that cleaning is like an ebb and flow. Think of it like a tide. It comes in and it goes out every single day. And so instead of trying to figure out a magical way to avoid it completely, the trick is to figure out a way to stay on top of it, to ride the wave, so to speak, so that every single day you are making progress and you're maintaining a clean house, not struggling to start all over every day. So let's just face a few facts first. What are you wanting out of your home? Are you wanting your home or your apartment or your room or whatever space it is? Are you wanting it to be where you can have people over? Is it a social activity that you're searching for? Are you wanting a creative space where you can have crafts and you can create, you can make music? So you're wanting things to give you vibes that bring out creativity. Or are you simply wanting to be able to relax and enjoy the space? Should it feel peaceful and joyful? These are things that are going to help you decide what to do with it. Now I want you to think about how do you feel when you're in your space. When I'm on the front porch, I feel peaceful. I feel happy. I feel joyful. But when I'm in my garage, I feel overwhelmed. I feel frustrated. I feel anxious. There's a whole different vibe. And that vibe is because this area is clean and decluttered and nice but when i go into my garage it is dingy and dirty and overwhelming because there's tons and tons and tons and tons of things out of place and stacked up and it's just a wreck and this gives me a very different emotion so go into each room and really think about how do i feel when i walk in do i dread opening the door is it something that i just don't want to deal with is there you know a happiness because it's my favorite place to snuggle up you know what are the feelings that you have and then write that down because you're going to need to focus all of your energy in those areas that are driving you the most crazy that give you the most anxiety because we don't want your whole house to feel that way as you pull up the driveway are you happy to be home or you dread the responsibilities that happen when you walk through the door? This is something that we need to flip. The next question that they ask is, what is the reason you find cleaning so hard? What are you doing? Are you avoiding it because you don't know how? Are you avoiding cleaning because you don't have time? Or is it more of a physical thing? You just physically don't have the stamina or the energy to get up and get going and do all the things things you need to identify the the roadblocks so that we can knock them out of the way and go ahead and get moving on progress and I always want you to know progress not perfection you and I no one needs to feel like there's an all-day marathon clean every single week just to get things back in order what I want you to think about is that you know how do you eat an elephant is it just too overwhelming? You're looking at the whole picture and not a small piece of the puzzle. Is it that you live with someone that's driving you crazy with their mess everywhere and it's not your things to move? 
write down what it is that's the roadblocks because unless you know the roadblocks we can't brainstorm the solutions so you need to go through and deep dive on what exactly is causing this issue so that we can fix it what have you tried and failed in the past think about the different plans that you've tried or if you try to do it like your mom or your grandma when they say this is the way to do it and it doesn't fit for you that doesn't mean that you're defective in fact it means that the system just doesn't work for you the goal of my channel is to find a plan that works for you and I don't care what that plan is I follow fly lady but clearly I'm checking out the cleaning sucks book for tips and things that I can customize to make it better for me and so that I can help you find one that works for you but I've probably tried at least seven <gasps> at least seven in the past three years of different cleaning methods and there are parts and pieces to each one of them that I like a little bit but overall none of them are perfect not one single cleaning system is perfect and so don't feel like you aren't good at cleaning because you know the fly lady system didn't work for you grandma's method doesn't work for you that is all bogus what works for you is figuring out your personality what's your style everybody has a style for everything you have a style in your clothes you have a preference in what kind of cars you like well your cleaning system is going to be a reflection of you and so if you are a highly organized person you are not going to clean the same as someone that's super creative or someone that's got ADHD like me me. we all have different things we bring to the table and there's beauty in all of it so stop beating yourself up because you didn't fit into a box the box isn't made to fit you that's the thing you need to embrace right now I hope you're hearing me can you raise a hand thumbs up and let people know that I am preaching truth over here today but the, the thing that I am the most excited about is that I am now opening up a membership program that's called Patreon so that if you're struggling, if you have not found a plan that's working and you just want to see some progress, I'm here to coach you through it. Like I will be your cheerleader. I will be your friend. And best of all, I can do guided weekly sessions that tell you exactly what to do and how to do them. If that's what you want. If you don't want that and you just want to get on there and have a little fun, we've got options for that too. But if you need extra help, let me know in the comments. How can I help you? I'm here for you. I will create the printables. I'll create the notebooks. I will do whatever I can to make this not feel so overwhelming. So basically, I touched on this a minute ago. And just like in the Bible, when you hear something said over and over again, it means, listen, this is important. Perfectionism is the enemy. Don't go down the path of thinking that you need to get your room perfect, your house perfect. Do not even consider that there's only one right way to do something. It's bogus, it's not. In order to figure out if you're perfect, there's a little test that I want you to do, okay? I want you to set a five minute timer and then go to the one mess that's driving you the most crazy. Is it the laundry? Is it the dishes? I want you to set the timer and then go work on it for five minutes. And when the timer goes off, you have to walk away. Are you able to walk away? If the dishes are half done, but not fully done, are you able to walk away? Because as much as I am a messy mama, and I was all kinds of ADHD and crazy all the time, the truth that I found was if I started it, I wanted to finish it. That is perfectionism. Now doesn't mean that your house is perfect. You can still be perfectionistic and be procrastinating on starting a project. That was me for years. I think that that is more common than we realize because if you think of it and the house is a mess and it's overwhelming and you don't start because you don't have time to finish, then that's a sign that you may be perfectionistic. So I want you to really think about this because our goal is not to get it perfect. Our goal is for every single day, for the rest of your life, to be 1% better than you are right now today. So Cleaning Sucks also says something that's so valuable that even, you know, Disney made a whole movie about it. Let it go, just like Elsa says, let it go. If you have too many things in a small space, 
then you're probably going to always, no matter how clean it is, you're going to not be happy because you have too many things. I need you to hear me without being upset with me because I know that this can be emotional, but address it. When you look at something, is it because somebody gave it to you and you don't feel like you should get rid of it? Or is it something that you have that means something to you? Because if you're holding on to everything somebody gives you, you're setting yourself up for complete failure. You have to acknowledge this one truth. And I'm telling you, I am preaching some truth today. So here we go. If someone buys you a present, Granny bought me this little bracelet last year for Christmas and it's a tacky little plastic set of bracelets. I'm never going to wear them. Not my style. Never ever will I put this on. This is her style. It's not my style. But my grandmother gave it to me. Does that obligate me to keep it forever because she bought it? For me. No. And here's why. When we buy something, we're buying something that we think that the person we're giving it to will love and appreciate and enjoy. And that's the joy. Receiving the gift is the joy. Enjoying the present is the joy. All of the things. So when I give that gift to you, that is the extent of the amount of control I have over it. If you don't enjoy it, and it's actually bringing you negative emotions. If you feel frustrated because you got to keep moving it. If it's taking up valuable space and you don't have room for things you'd rather have. If it's just absolutely not something that you're going to love. Then instead of the joy that it was intended, it's actually bringing you a negative feeling. And no one wants you to hold on to things that are bringing you negative feelings. So let it go. It's okay. This, this is a passionate thing for me because I am in the family with hoarders. Like I have direct family members that had an actual real problem with needing to keep things and they had emotional attachments to everything like tinfoil, butter dishes, everything. And I think with all the love that I can pour into you, I need to tell you that tinfoil is not ever, ever going to be an actual valuable item to anyone. So if you're holding on to things and you know that if something happened tomorrow, no one would ever want it. They've already told you to throw it away. Stop holding on to it instead of holding on to the people. Does that, uh, I feel like I'm getting a little bit too deep right now, but I just, God is putting that on my heart. Like somebody needs to hear that. If the value you place on things is more important than the value you place on the people, then you've got things all messed up and you need to reevaluate your system and your place and your frame of reference. Hmm. So to get back on track, basically I'm just saying if you don't love it, let it go. Like let it be free. I'm not saying throw it away. Donate it. Somebody else may be looking for that exact thing. It may be something they can't afford to buy for themselves. Let it go and make room for the things that you love to be seen and used and touched and enjoyed. The first thing is where to start. You start in the area that's driving you the most crazy. So we are in my dining room and the reason why this is where I'm starting today is can you see that this room there you go this room has become somewhat of an office while my husband is trying to start a business he has quit his job and we no longer even have an income so it's very important that this business get up and off the ground ASAP because I don't know how we're paying our bills this month anyway so as part of that, we get a lot of shipments and they are all landing here in the dining room until he can go through and deal with things. I need to figure out what can I do so that it's not driving me crazy because this is in direct line of the kitchen and the living room. Everybody can see this mess when they walk in the house and that brings me unhappiness and anxiety. So what we need to do is set a 20 minute timer and just get busy. Get as much of it done as you can for today. Now at the end of 20 minutes, sit down and take a break. 
Let's talk about discouragement for just a second because I think it's really important to let you guys in on a little secret. I am not naturally clean and tidy. In fact, I started this channel because when I got divorced and I was at my lowest low, I could not get the energy to even get up out of bed on the weekends that the kids were not around. I was at rock bottom, I felt worthless, and I didn't have any hope that things were ever going to be better until I just got sick of myself. And when I got sick of myself, I went looking for ways that I could at least start to be a grown up. Because even though I was old enough to have like kids, I still wasn't a grown up. And so I want you to understand that I don't come from a preachy standpoint. I 100% get it. When you are at your lowest point, cleaning the house can be overwhelming. It can seem worthless. It can seem, you know, just completely stupid. But I want you to understand that I found joy and confidence in making things better. And that's why I preach the 1% better because I don't want you to think that you're supposed to get up and tackle everything all the time. I am simply saying 1% better. And when you start to see that, you're gonna feel 1% better when you see 1% better. And so you have to track your wins. And so I'm kind of setting myself up for some successes right off the bat every day so that I don't have to feel like a failure at the end of the day. I hope that makes sense. So one of the ways that I do that is I set up some routines and they're simple, simple routines for things that I really want to get done every day. And I break it up into a few things in the morning and a few things at night and a few things scattered through the day. I never get them all done. But when I sit down and I complete a task and I can check it off the list and then at the end of the day, and then at the end of the day, I can come back and I can see all that progress. Look at all of those check marks. Even if I only got four out of the 10, it's four things I accomplished today that were four things that if I wasn't tracking, I probably would not even do. So we literally have to reframe our entire thinking. So instead of looking at that sink that we worked on earlier and you got five minutes in and you walked away from it, instead of looking at that as I still have a sink full of dirty dishes, now you can look at it and go, look at how much I got done in five minutes. And the amazing thing is, is that once you take a quick breather, you might go, I think I could do another five minutes and finish up. Let me just go do it. Now let's talk about something that's really super important. A lot of us have issues. <laughs> a lot of us have issues. A lot of us have physical reasons that we can't get things done. You have an autoimmune disease, you have knee problems, back problems, you know, you're, you've got terrible arthritis, whatever the case is, or maybe it's just, you know, anxiety and depression and things like that. My goal for you is to think about what can you do on the bad days. So plan B can be as simple as on bad days, I am gonna do paper clutter. I'm gonna sit on the couch, I'm gonna have the TV going, and I'm gonna go through that stack of clutter that's on the end of my counter, and I'm gonna deal with bills, and I'm gonna shred anything that needs to be shredded, and I'm just gonna deal with it. I'm gonna get a trash bag, I'm gonna get you know, my computer, and I'm gonna deal with it, and I can still be watching TV with my leg up, and it's all good. Or one of my least favorite things is folding laundry. So at the end of the day, or during a break, when I'm just kind of tapped out, I'll grab my laundry basket, sit and watch reality TV, which is oh, one of my favorite things. And I don't like to do it very often, but it's the reward for doing the chore that I hate the most, which is matching up those socks. <laughs> There's a ton of things, if you think about it, that you could do. You could pull up a stool or a chair and put a box in front of you and declutter a box. So if you can't even get out of the bed, you can still check the emails and take care of that, right? So if you wanna know how I pre-plan my week, check out this video. I will help you set up a full week of things that are kind of your goals, your plan A's, and then also some plan B items that you could do on days that you just want to take a break or go lightly. Anyways, I will see you there. You guys have a blessed week. 
Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for our ability to come together from across the miles so that we can lift and encourage each other. Father God, I pray that if there's anyone that's having one of those days where it's hard to get up, get moving, get motivated, I pray that this would be the motivation that you would send the energy to them right now, Father God. Give them the strength and the encouragement that they can make a difference. 1% better is all that it takes. Father God, I just praise you and I thank you for their inner strength, their beauty, and I thank you that we've become friends. In all things, I give praise and honor to your name, Jesus. Amen. Bye.